Hey everybody, thank you for watching Leaf by Leaf. As 2019 draws to a close, I've begun thinking about my reading lists for 2020. Now, every year, uh, admittedly, I do make these reading lists and I tell myself that yes, I'm definitely going to do this. Um, and then as the year progresses, uh, usually one book leads to another unexpected book. There would be maybe a single line in a book that gets me thinking about another one and then I'm compelled to read that or someone posts something um, and they sell me on it um, or something comes out and I really, really want to review it. But anyway, uh, there's always a core that I pick that I do get around to. I commit to them and it's always 10. I, I seem to like 10s. So uh, this is my uh, core must read list for 2020. First up is Barry Lopez's Horizon. This is his latest book. His travel writing uh, is incredible and I've heard um, that this is sort of the capstone of his life and he gets very uh, ruminative and philosophical, meditative and so on uh, while also taking us all over the globe. Next up, Virginia Woolf the Waves. Um, I've really been wanting to read this one. I've only read two of her books. I've read A, a Room of One's Own, uh, which is a great uh, essay, and uh, To the Lighthouse, of course, which is sublime. Uh, but I've heard that The Waves is even better. Hannah Arendt, Life of the Mind. This is sort of... Um, this is sort of philosophy and autobiography. Obviously, uh, she's going to be talking about her life. She is the great thinker um, and chronicler of uh, atrocities against the Nazis. Um, she was there, of course, to uh, watch the trial of uh, Ekman, and she has a book uh, that is very popular called The Banality of Evil, which is based on that um, trial with Ekman, and then also her great work of scholarship, uh, The Origins of Totalitarianism. But anyway, it'll be great to see what this, this great mind um, puts into this. It's, it's split into two sections. The first one is thinking, and the second one is willing. And you can see that she covers about the whole gamut of her studies uh, in philosophy. Um, I see epistemology, uh, uh, I see ontological ruminations, um, I see of course metaphysics and uh, ethics, morals, and, uh, and so on. Um, but this, this kind of looks like it's going to be like Iris Murdoch's uh, Metaphysics as a Guide to Morals where it's just kind of their whole career of thinking uh, boiled down. Um, or not boiled down, but distilled into uh, one book. So I really look forward to reading this one. This is one of my books that I'm ashamed I haven't read yet. Uh, along with The Count of Monte Cristo, we have uh, War and Peace. I don't really need to say anything about this, just that it's probably time for me to go ahead and see what all the fuss is about. And really with Tolstoy, I've only read two of his books. I've read um, A Confession, and I have read Haji Murad. The only pension I have not read Mason and Dixon. Now, I'm not ashamed for not having read this. Um, this is kind of like Darkenville's cat for me. Um, with both of them, I've read the first sentence, sometimes the first chapter, um, several times. And that has been enough to let me know that I'm both not ready to read it um, and highly ready to read it. I guess what it is is that I don't want the experience to be over because I know how much I'm going to savor it. This is the only reread in the stack, JR. Um, I thought about rereading The Recognitions, but I'm just not ready, um, even though that is my favorite of his books. Um, but this is just, I, I've been thinking a lot about uh, capitalism and money and, and the free market and so on lately, and this is just a great commentary on that. Okay, Fernando Pessoa, Book of Disquiet. It really is a shame I haven't read this yet. From, from everything I've heard about it, um, this is a book for me. Again, it's time for me to get on the ball with 2666. I have not read anything uh, from Bologna. The only three books I have are The Third Reich, 2666, and Savage Detectives. Um, and normally I wouldn't start with what seems to be the magnum opus, but in this case, um, I'm gonna do it. Richard Powers, my man. Uh, I love this guy. This is his latest book, The Overstory. Um, 
yeah, it's there's no way I won't like this. And finally, the massive tome that I will probably kick off the new year with in 2020. Robert Musil, The Man Without Qualities, the Mittel Europa sensation. For people who know, this one pretty much uh, speaks for itself. I count it as one book, um, even though you know it's split into two volumes. Um, luckily, the first one is a little smaller than the second one, um, so I can kind of cut my teeth. Um, but anyway, looking through this, this would probably take me all of January, especially because usually in January, uh, <laughs> my job that actually pays my bills uh, takes up a lot more of my time so I can't spend uh, four to five hours a day reading uh, like I normally do. I'm usually very tired uh, in the mornings and late at night. But anyway, uh, that is my 2020 um, mandatory reading. Um, I would love to hear about what you're planning to read in 2020 and if you have any recommendations for me uh, please uh, give them to me. Ever since I started this YouTube channel, I have uh, discovered so many writers and so many great books uh, because of all of you. So thank you to all of my subscribers, and I wish you a happy new year.